So China has been attacking the United States, and apparently this has been going on for quite some time. But we here in the United States haven't been discussing this, we haven't been talking about this, and some of these attacks have not even been reported. You know why? Because we have been distracted. The United States as a whole has been distracted. We've been distracted from this Russia and Ukraine war, and now this war between Israel and Hamas. Well, today we're going to discuss what's going on. I will explain what's happening in uh, Gaza. We're going to talk about what is potentially going to happen for Ukraine. And we're going to talk about these attacks on the United States from China. So let's get right down to it. All I ask is one thing. It takes two seconds. Go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates. And now let's begin. So the first thing that you need to know and really come to understand is that the United States being led by uh, President Biden is pushing for one thing. He wants funding to go to Ukraine. And the reason why he wants funding to go to Ukraine is simple. He says without funding to Ukraine, Russia will win that war. And if Russia wins that war and they take over some of the Ukraine territory, the problem is Russia would then be closer to NATO allies. Again, this is a problem. If Russia is closer to NATO countries, there is a chance, and even Vladimir Putin has said this himself, that he would go deeper and potentially target a NATO member. Again, if we see an attack on one NATO member, it's an attack on all NATO members. That was a statement from President Biden over a year ago. Now, I want to show you this, okay? Because not only is President Biden pushing for funding for Ukraine, he's asking for additional assistance in Israel. But, and again, he brings this up just the other day, because President Biden pledges Israel support at a Hanukkah event, but delivers a warning on public opinion. Now, when I saw this, this came out yesterday, it's from CNN. When I saw this, it's true that he is warning the United States about what the public is going to say. Let's, let's go ahead and read this. Okay, He says, we'll continue to provide military assistance to Israel until they get rid of Hamas. But we have to be careful. They have to be careful. He goes on to say, the whole world's public opinion can shift overnight. We can't let that happen. And the reason we can't let that happen is because as the world's opinion shifts, well, so does the support that the United States is able to give. As of right now, with Israel, the, the world's opinion on the U.S. has shifted enough, actually shifted a little bit, that we are concerned, but the problem is, it hasn't shifted enough that President Biden is feeling the pressure yet. And that's where we would feel, uh, or that's where we'd be really concerned because we could not do anything about that. Now, he also goes on to say, I also recognize you're hurting from the silence and the fear and for your safety because of a surge of anti-Semitism in the United States of America and around the world. It's sickening. And he goes on to add, you know we see it across our communities and schools and colleges and social media. They surface painful scars from uh, millennia to of hate to genocide of the Jewish people. We, we're seeing this all over the place. And one of the things I, I told you guys uh, right after the attack started, so probably it was probably the middle of October, so about two months ago, I said we have to be careful. We have to be careful because we are going to see this spread. We're going to see the, the news spread. We're seeing the pictures. We're seeing the videos of you know children just, you know, their faces are just bloody. The women, uh, you know, just the way they've been treated. Um, a lot of issues here. And the United States is being held responsible for it. Saying that we are trying to fund Israel, who's attacking... Palestinian people. Essentially, they're attacking Hamas, but 
Hamas is hiding behind the people, and yet they just go right through them without a care in the world. It's a problem. Now, President Biden, he did say that uh, he has disagreements with uh, Israel's uh, Netanyahu, and I want to read you what he said, okay? Because he, he wrote a little thing. He said he, he noted he made an inscription on an old photograph of the two men using a nickname for the Israeli leader. And he says, I wrote on the top of it, BB, I love you, but I don't agree with the damn thing you had to say. And it's about the same today, okay? That Israel's in a tough spot and they've had their differences over the past really handful of months. But again, keep in mind, the, the number of people still being hurt keeps going up. What we now know is that uh, more than 49,000 people have been injured. Okay, more than 49,000 people. That's a lot. Okay, 12,000 people uh, have lost their lives. Okay, 12,000 people. That is crazy. Just those numbers. Okay, actually not 12,000. 18,000 people have lost their lives. Okay, 18,000 people have lost their lives. And almost 50,000 people have been injured. This is just in Gaza, okay, where about 75% of the 2 million people have been displaced from their homes, okay? Now, probably wonder, well, how does all this have anything to do with China? Well, it's simple. That China is using these attacks in, in, for other countries as a way to distract the United States Okay? And not saying Chinese government per se, but Chinese back groups. Okay? Chinese groups are attacking the United States. And I'll get to that in just a moment because it's all these different distractions. Like this one. Israel is pounding Gaza, but hunger is spreading and disease risks grow. People don't even have food. I was reading this, uh, this uh, article the other day had multiple interviews from people in Gaza. One of the, the parents was saying that uh, they haven't, and both parents, haven't eaten in like four or five days. I read another one that said the, the, the dad, uh, he, he couldn't even, or here's one right here, okay? Right here says, I couldn't find bread and the prices of rice, salt, and beans have doubled uh, several times over. This is starvation. Uh, Israel kills us twice, once by bombs and once by hunger. Um, but there was one where the, the dad, he was taking, he was trying, fighting for bread for his children. He had three children. He was fighting for bread just to give his children. He hasn't eaten in days. And he said that his worry is he's just going to fall over. Because lack of energy, lack of nutrition. He's just going to fall over. And then his young children are going to have to care for him. That's how bad things are getting. But again, this is why countries are and other leaders and even the Pentagon is saying that this is why the United States is potentially at risk because we are being distracted by all these things happening around us. And it's we're not looking at what's going on here within the United States. For example, another thing going on around us. A missile fired from Yemen's Houthi rebels strikes a Norwegian flag tanker in the Red Sea. And the Houthis have been very clear on this. If there are not uh, ships going in, if the ships are not going into Gaza to give food, medicine to the people, they're going to strike. They're going to hit those ships. And if any ship is headed towards Israel, they are going to attack that ship. Okay, any ship, doesn't matter what's on it. But again, this is a cause for concern, but at the same time, this is keeping the United States distracted while China attacks. Look at this. This is just from yesterday. It says China's cyber army is invading critical US services. It says a utility in Hawaii, a West Coast port, and a pipeline are among the victims in the past year, officials say. Did you hear about much of that? Not really. 
We didn't hear about much of that because, again, we were distracted. They don't want us to know about some of these things. Okay? It says the Chinese military is ramping up its ability to disrupt key American infrastructure, including power and water utilities, as well as communications and transportation systems, according to U.S. officials and industry security officials. It says hackers affiliated with China's People's Liberation Army have burrowed into the computer systems of about two dozen critical entities over the past year. The intrusions are part of a broader effort to develop ways to sow panic and chaos or snarl logistics in the event of a U.S.-China conflict in the Pacific, they said. said among the victims are a water utility in Hawaii, a major West Coast port, and at least one oil and gas pipeline. People familiar with the instance told the Washington Post. The hackers also attempted to break into the operator of Texas, uh, Texas Power Grid, which operates independently from electrical systems in the rest of the country. Now, let's just be clear on this. These attacks, they're slow, okay? Because what experts are telling us is that this is just a way for them to get into the systems. They will be patient. And if we see a US-China conflict, then, and only then, expect for these attacks to escalate. Power grids will be shut down. Water systems shut down. Okay? We will struggle if the United States and China have an increased conflict. And again, with Taiwan, there's always that chance we're going to see this conflict escalate. So, that's what we know at this time. That right now, while the United States, and over the past couple of years, while the U.S. has been somewhat distracted, China is setting up. So, as soon as we get more information, I promise I'll fill you in on all the latest news and updates. But that is what we know as of today. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.